All right. Good morning, everybody. Let's get going. Today, we're going to start to review for your test. You got a test on Thursday and Friday over two different units combined. Unit seven was about exponential functions and unit eight is about logarithmic functions. So we're going to review today and tomorrow. Got your big fat review packet here. You know what to do with that. And uh, make sure you master that to the best of your ability. That's kind of indicative of how the test will be going, right? Natural logs. logs. Dang right. All right. So in fact, the directions on this one are to write these as a single logarithm, and the fancy word for that is to condense them, to put them into one single log. This is a good skill to have regardless, just because sometimes you got equations with like a log plus another log or something like that, and you might want to put them into a single log. I'd rather work with one log than two separate logs or three separate logs. So that's kind of what you always want to condense for. But today we're doing specific numbers, so let's see what we can do with these problems right here. Number one says, Five natural log of two plus natural log of three. So right off the bat, the first step is you had you had done two steps for condensing. Do you remember what they were? The first one is to bring the coefficients back in as exponents. So that's the first thing you're doing when you're condensing. There's a five in front of this one and a three in front of this. So we're going to bring those back in as exponents. So this will be natural log of two to the fifth. And remember, natural log just means log base e. It's just another log. You're doing the same thing you always do with logs. And in the same way, you're going to bring the three back in as an exponent. And the reason that's step one is because all of our properties for logs about expanding them, you know, the product property and the quotient property, and all those things, they're all based on just having nothing in front of your logs. So here, now what we, the last step is you're going to undo the product property. Remember the product property said if you have a log of two things times each other, like x times y, you can call it log of x plus log of y. Well, I'm going to go the other way. Here I have a log of x, something, plus a log of y. I'm going to go back and put them together as a product inside of the logarithm. So this would be what it is all condensed together right here, undoing the product property right there. And then you can probably get your calculator and figure out what 2 to the 5th times 3 to the 3rd is. The whole point of this is to get log of one thing. You know, I'm not too concerned about what 2 to the 5th times 3 to the 3rd is. We could figure it out if we wanted to. But that's the point, get it into a single log. Anybody got that number? It's probably huge. 864. 864. Thank you much. So natural log of 864 is the answer to this particular problem. And that's it. Any questions over those two steps? Very important. Similarly, for number two, we're going to practice it yet again. You have two different logs. We like to condense them, put them into a single log if all possible. And the two steps, again, are if there's numbers in front, bring them back in as exponents. And then either undo your power or quotient rule or whatever rule applies. So in these cases, they both got a two in the front. So we're going to bring the twos back in and make them exponents. So this will be natural log of now two squared minus natural log of four squared. And what did you think of when you have a log minus another log? That's that, that comes from the pro quotient property. Remember that one, the quotient, when you one divided by another one. And remember, positive logs go on top and negative logs go on bottom. So this is it here, it all condensed down into a single logarithm, undid your quotient rule right there. And we can simplify that, it's just a fourth, I believe, if you do the number crunching. So we can just call this natural log of one fourth. And again, those are the two steps. So it's actually a very important skill. Are we clear on what's going on here with the going backwards the other way? Okay, good, I'm good, because that's freaking important. So I'll make sure we have that skill kind of figured out. All right, then moving right along, number three and four is just strip some solving some equations with some uh, natural logs. You have to use natural log. That's pretty much what you should go for on your test, too. You have an equation, and you get to pick what log you want to use. You should use natural log all the time. So number one, write down three e to the something. The exponential is the e to the x plus one part. All the other stuff is really not that important on this. Your job is to get the exponential by itself, if at all possible, and then to undo it with a log. So for number three, clearly the exponential is not by itself. We have a whole bunch of other junk floating around besides this e to the x plus one thing. So let's start unwrapping it and get this e to the x plus one thing by itself. I would think probably add four first, would you kind of agree? Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Then the base is not 3e. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. Let's divide both sides by 3. Dang right. This is what you want. You want to have just a base and an exponent, base and an exponent. That's all you want to buy itself, if at all possible. Because now I know how to undo this exponential with a 
log, natural log specifically. So I'll do a natural log of this side, which means I have to do a natural log of this side. And for this particular equation, since the base was E, and you're using natural logs, which are base E, these completely cancel out. If they didn't, that'd be okay. The exponent would just come out in front, right? And we got x plus one is natural log of six, so just subtracting one. Final answer is whatever the natural log of six is, minus one. And that's all there is to that. Questions over that one? All right, you guys are rocking it. Lastly, number four, this one looks like a pain. Why does number four look like a pain? Anybody know why? Yeah, there's exponent on both sides. Maybe I could get the bases to be the same. That would save my life, but twos and fives don't play nicely together, do they? Well, that sucks. Okay, well, let's dive in and do what we do then. We got exponentials. Let's do a log to undo them. So natural log of both sides. Natural log of this side. And now, even though it's an inequality, you do the exact same things. The only thing you ever have to do different is what? Worry about multiplying or dividing by a negative, right? That's pretty much it and flip it. And these bases do not match, but that's okay. Because as we've been practicing quite a bit, the exponents just come out in front, right? So 2x comes out. So now I have 2x times natural log of 2. And same thing here, the exponent of negative x will come out. So I have negative x times natural log of 5. Hmm. Okay. Thoughts on this, guys? They both have x's. I would suggest you get the x's on one. Why? Why are we always getting the x's on one side? Usually because we could have got the both got an x, we could factor the x. Oh, yeah, it's no different here. Yeah, same stuff, yeah. So let's move this junk to one side. I know it's tempting to divide by some stuff, but let's not do that. I'll move this one over. Now, how, let's see, I like to also write things in a more familiar order. I like my x's in the middle, that's kind of weird. So I'm gonna write this as two natural log of two times x. And then when I move the other one over, it'll now be positive. And that's a natural log of five times x. And now that you got all the x's on one side, then you can factor out the x. Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's the good stuff right there. Oh yeah, factor that x out. Uh, I put the two in the natural log kind of in one little thing, yeah. No worries. So you got x times this number, whatever it is, I don't know. It's greater than or equal to zero. All we gotta do is divide by that number, right? but we're working on inequalities. So I better check real quick if that number is positive or negative, especially if you're not comfortable with logs and stuff like that. So two natural log of two plus natural log of five. Is it positive or is it negative? Positive or negative? I don't know. I got 2.5. Well, that's positive, isn't it? So I think when we divide by this, we don't need to flip the inequality. What is zero divided by anything anyway? Zero. All right, so actually it turned out to be a nice, clean, pretty nice answer. All we're doing is looking for the x's that are greater than or equal to zero, which in interval notation, that's what I always want. This is cute, like a middle school thing, but I always want some brackets and some parentheses. All the x's that are greater than or equal to zero would be everything from zero to infinity and beyond. And that's that. You guys good on that? All right, sounds good. Well, let's start reviewing then. So that's the task for today, LGs. We're gonna review unit seven today. Unit seven was just about exponentials. I've also decided to cut out one of the sections that, from the test so it won't be quite as horrible on you. Remember that one with all the patterns and the geometric things and the sums and all that? You no. Know? Well, we that did it. We that. did it. So I'm going to cut out that part about geometric sequences of series. So you got it's kind of a clunky thing. It doesn't go with the rest of the unit. So, and I didn't have time to write the review assignment from scratch. Oh, Rich, Richard brought one in. He stole it while he was doing stuff out there. Excellent. More chairs. Chairs equals power. Yeah. Right. Here's the big fat thing. 
It is due on Thursday. This will mostly, this review assignment I'm handing out will mostly be the speed of your test. Your test might be a smidge easier. I put a couple challenge problems on here just to try to stretch your brain. I don't think I would do that to you on a test, but most of this I'd say 95% is exactly the speed of what you'll expect. All right, eight four. That was assigned before the weekend, and unfortunately, we didn't have a work day today because we started to review. So that is due today. Make sure that's turned in either on paper or online sometime. And this is eight point five. It's all you got to worry about this week. It's due on Thursday. Your test is Thursday. It's a two day test, Thursday and Friday, just like normal. So you got plenty of time to get the problems figured out. But you really need to be harping on this, right? You know the drill. If you can do this, you'll do the test. If if you like, I've said before, if you thumb through this and you only know sixty percent of it. Guess what you're probably going to get on the test? 60%, something like that. So you pretty much have, need to have everything mastered, but that's what the rest of the week is for anyway, right? All right, let's go ahead and get going. Here we go, quick review. Unit 7, exponential functions. Very quickly, the first section was about graphs of exponentials. And if you look on the board here, this kind of does say it all. If you see an exponential, what's an exponential again? Like 2 to the x, 3 to the x, something like that. You should be thinking of this shape down here, okay? This is your parent function. Where does it level off to on the left? It levels off at zero, correct? Remember that. And it just grows and grows and grows, correct? If the base is more than one. Why? Because if you multiply by something more than one, over and over again, it gets bigger and bigger. What if the base was less than one? Then it'd be going down. Yes, exactly right. Things you should know about an exponential just by default. What's the domain? Always negative infinity and infinity. I don't care what function I ever give you from left to right. It'll always exist for a particular exponential. By default, though, the range is only 0 up to infinity. See that right there? Because as we talked about, it only levels off at 0. It doesn't touch it, though, right? That's why the parentheses are there, all the way up to infinity. And what's a key point on here? 0, 1 maybe is a key point? Because anything to the 0 power is 1. So seeing that point right there of 0, 1 is a good thing to use if you have to stretch and move things around. End behavior, as you go really far to the left, it goes to zero right. As you go really far to the right, it goes all the way up to infinity. You gotta know that one right there. Besides that, the only thing I'm gonna do is maybe add you know, a shift to it, you know, a vertical stretch or some kind of crap like that to move things around. And that's all you really need to know about the graphs of exponentials. So per our usual routine, why don't we take a look at the review assignment and if you wanna just do one to model it, we can do that. There's not that many about the graphs um, of exponentials. That's just one through three. One through three is graphs of exponentials. Any of those look particularly crazy? Number three. number three, sure, let's do number three. It's got a six in front, it's time to freak out. Here we go, number three, let's see. We got ourselves, graph this thing, six times two to the x minus five. State the domain and range. Without even looking at this thing, what's the domain? Write that down, negative infinity to infinity. You got that right. Okay, now what should pop to mind? Your mind should never look at this thing, the whole thing. You should just look at the exponential part first. This is kind of what 2 to the x looks like, correct? Okay. What happens if you put a 6 in front of it? It just stretches it by 6. Now, that's kind of hard to draw. The only real point you have that you might want to use is, like we carped on, 0, 1 will always be on these, this graph right here. So if you do take 0, 1 and stretch it by 6, guess where that would be at now? 6 times higher. Which would guess where that would be? 0, 6. So that's a good point. Uh, let's see. Maybe 0, 6 will be on a graph of 6 times to the x. It look very, very similar, something like that. What's the minus 5 do, though? Shifts everything down 5, right. So I need to take this kind of shape and move it down five, meaning where will it level off? Not zero, negative, negative five. Yeah. So on your graph, maybe start off going down to negative five. Watch out for these axes. They go by twos, which is kind of stupid. But wherever negative five is, maybe draw a little asymptote from that term, horizontal asymptote. It's going to level off to this thing. Now, we just scoot everything down five, too. We never did that on this point. Where's this point back to if you move it down five? It's back down to zero, one again. So zero, one is still going to be a point on this graph. 
And then you can just kind of fill it in. There was no negatives, no nothing to flip things right. No negatives in front of the junk, no negatives in my X. It should be the normal shape. So something like that, something like that. Even if you didn't worry about the point zero one, I wouldn't worry about that too much. The key thing here was there was a stretch. Is it easy to draw stretches? Not, not usually. So if you didn't even worry about the six, I probably wouldn't get mad at you. The key thing is the what? The minus five. That moved it down five. Plus you got your graphing calculators too, right? So you should be able to type that in your calculator. You should see something like this. And you should know where it levels off to. Don't go to the calculator and say, oh, it looks like it levels off at negative four. Use the equation. The equation tells you where things really level off to right there. And that's it for that. Any questions over the graphs? All right, continuing the review then. Moving right along. Yes, it would be. That's a good point. I forgot to answer that. Good job. Parenthesis or bracket on the negative five? Which one? I'm hearing two answers. There's no bracket. No bracket. Parenthesis, right. Because it never, you guys got it. You guys got it. Exactly. That's it. Well done. Okay, so I'm not going to overload you with the graphs, okay? But you do need to know the basics. You need to do some simple things where you maybe shift them around and stuff like that. No big deal. Okay. And then, of course, the exponents will go down to, I already talked about that, right? That's when the base is less than one. So you expect the graph to look more like that right there. So I think I've hit the graphing thing quite enough. Section 7.2 is about solving exponential equations and inequalities, okay? We've been practicing that a lot. So let's see. Back in these days, the only thing you could maybe do to solve this without logs was to get the basis to be the same. Don't forget that trick, okay? I'm not going to have two different sections on your test. Oh, here you can get the basis to be the same, and here you can't. Just think about it when you see the problem. If you can get the basis to be the same at all, then you can usually solve these without doing a dang thing about logs at all. And there is something about money on there. Remember the money stuff a long time ago? Yeah, that's back. So real quick, there were two equations for interest. Let's review them really, really quickly. I will put them on the board during the day, but you might want to recopy them just because, you know, have them handy. These are the two equations for money. One was for compounding so many times per year. This one was for when you compound n times per year. So remember what this stuff means is if you have an interest rate and you don't want to give to them just once a year, maybe you break it in 12 parts to give it 12 times a year or something like that, or break it into 365 parts. So n is the number of times per year it's compounded. So if somebody says something was compounded monthly, what would n be? Well, exactly. Something was compounded daily, it'd be 365, right? Yeah. It's compounded annually, then n would be boring, it'd be one. Exactly. So you got to know what the rest of the things stand for, too. Anybody remember what uh, r is? It's your interest rate, correct? As a decimal, make sure you use a decimal. If I give you 4%, don't you dare put 4. Put 0. 0. 0.04. Exactly. Uh, t is your time in years. And anybody remember what the p stands for? P is your it's a principal, yeah which is a fancy financial word for how much money you put in. That's how most equations always start off. Here's what you get out, here's what you put in. Oh, tell me what you put in, I'll do something to it and I'll spit out something right there. So if you know what all the letters stand for, and I won't put those on the board, I will give you the equations, but I expect you to know what A, P, and R and all those things stand for, and then you just kind of plug in your calculator, right? It's pretty straightforward after that. Then we did do later on compounded X, uh, continuously, and that's this equation right here. This is the key term continuously, which means that they break up into more and more time. They're doing it like basically every second, every nanosecond. They're just doing it consistently, continuously all the time. And you would use this equation if that was the key word. Otherwise, they'll always say it's compounded monthly. Okay, that's so many times per year, n is 12. Oh, it's compounded semi-annually, ha half a year, okay. N is two. But if they just say compounded continuously, that doesn't tell you how many times per year. It just means all the time. And then you use this one right here. Oh, and that's just plugging things into the equation. So we got a few problems on this kind of stuff. Eight through 13 in your review assignment are all kind of financial stuff. Got any one? They're all basically the same. You just want to pick one or? Uh, I heard 11. We'll do 11. Okay. So 11, scanning it real quick. A man invests $100,000. What letters, how much you put in? Uh -huh, P. So right off the bat, I'm using one of these two equations. 
and P is going to be 100,000. Uh, he earns 1% interest. There's your interest rate, right? Compounding continuously. There's the buzzword. So which one do I use, A or B? B. B. All right, let's write down B. A, the amount I get out, that's what A stands for, amount, is your principal times E to the RT. So filling in the blanks, let's see here. The principal we just said is 100,000. That's how much they're investing. Remember, E is just a number. Remember that button is on your calculator? Yeah, we're just going to type that in. E to the R, 1%. As I keep harping on, don't write 1. Write the decimal equivalent. Divide by 100 if you don't know what it is. And how much money do they have after 15 years? There's T. So T is 15. So as long as you can plug it into your calculator. Where's the E button again? Where is the E button, everybody? It's in the mapping. Uh, so it's on the left. If you go down to where the natural log button is, LN. Yeah, it's right above it in blue. No problems. Good job, guys. Thanks, guys. Sweet. What'd you get? $116,133.42. All right, anybody concur? All right, there it is. Officially, that's how much it's going to go be worth at this particular time. I did put a couple extra questions on here about something that we did not talk about yet. And uh, I'm just going to throw in at the end, ready? There is some one other small thing, and it's called depreciation. Anybody know what that term means? Well, yeah. It goes down. Goes down, right. You ever buy something, then all of a sudden, like, they say, oh, I just took my car off the lot, and now, now the value depreciates. Well, I'll give you an equation for that too, real quick. And it's the same crap. You just plug in. Plug in. Yeah, I saw 13 was. Copy that one down. I'll put that on the board also when the test comes. I never really harped on that too much because the lessons didn't, but heck, it's the same crap. You might as well just learn it, you know, right here. Same thing, right? Why do you think there's a minus sign in this one instead of a plus? Because it goes down. Exactly. Yep. Oh, uh, now you just plug things in. Do you want to do one of those since we never have? Yeah. All right, which one? Uh, all right, here we go, 13. You buy a car for $20,000. I wonder what letter represents what you're starting with. Probably P. So there's your P. And they're also saying its value depreciates at a rate. So when they say depreciates, I guess I'm going to use the one for depreciation right there. At a rate of 8% every year, how long? How much will it be worth in 30 years? Well, here we go. A is P times 1 minus R to the T. No tricks. Initially, the car was $20,000. The rate is 8%, which as a decimal is 0 0.08. And this has been done for 30 years. So again, you just plug it in your calculator and you spit out an answer and everything's fine. Probably not going to be worth very much after 30 years. Would you agree? Good question. I probably wouldn't pick on you, but I would always round down because my phrase is the world's going to screw you. They're never going to give you that. Six thirty-nine, or what would you say with a thousand two? Sixteen thirty-nine. Okay. I believe that. Do you believe that? Yeah. Things lose their value very, very, very. Quickly. So just throw that extra one in there. You know, if you're learning about how money grows, there's no reason you can't do one more equation with the same letters and about how it depreciates too. And that's kind of 8% every year for 30. Well, yeah, that's a lot of percent loss, which is why it's worth basically nothing at the end right there. Okay. Anything about the money at all? We good on money? Yeah. All right. Let's go back to the review then. So other stuff. Um, you know, they got inequalities too. I'm, I'm really not going to say anything separate about inequalities because it's the same procedure, right? You just got to do, remember, if you multiply or divide by a negative, make sure you flip it. That's all you got to worry about that. Section 7.3 was talking about special functions, although this is just a number, right? E. Okay, so don't put this on some pedestal just because there's a number called E doesn't mean that anything is different. It, it, handling an E to the X is the same thing as handling a 7 to the X. It's the same exact junk right there. And then here's the section you're going to, I'm going to let you skip. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's look over it real, real, real quick just to remember what it was. Uh, sequences and series. Remember, there's like a list of numbers. 
Remember that junk, right? Yeah, it's kind of out of place in the rest of the unit, but it was, it was, it was kind of useful too. And then what you were multiplying by every time was called your common ratio, right? Yeah. You had a first term. You had all these weird fancy equations for them too. Remember these sum equations? If you actually add them all up and stuff like that. So it was a cute little skill. Um, I, you know, there was sigma notation too, but we're not going to harp on that. Yeah, that big thing that's called sigma. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a little tricky, wasn't it? I thought that they slammed quite a bit at you on that one section, and that's a little unfair to, to tell. You got enough to worry about, don't you, with yeah. exponentials and logs? I kind of figured as well. So that kind of concludes Unit 7. Now, the only thing else to do in Unit 7 today is maybe just practice some random problems involving um, exponential equations and things like that. So let's see. I'll tell you what. Anything 14 through 18... Or maybe just 14 through 16, because really those three are the only ones you can solve without, guess what? What's the thing that undoes an exponential? A log. a log. Yeah, only 14 through 16 do not require a log. Do you see why? Why would 14 through 16 not require a log? Anybody see why? Because I can get the bases to be the same. That's right. So we should practice one of those. I don't care which one. Anything 14 through 16? 16. Oh, oh. 16, is, 16 is very loud. Every single one, it'll be easy. Don't worry. Or you're You're both right. They're about the same. They're about the same speed. All right, here we go. You guys want to do one with a fraction, huh? Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. We got time. That's because that's pretty much it for the day. Um. You can get the bases the same, right? Yeah. 25 is five. five squared, isn't it? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to call this. <laughs> Too late now. So you have a power raised to a power, which means you must multiply them, correct? So this is 5 to the 2x. All right. Now, the only thing that can possibly trip you up on this problem is, do you know what to do with exponents when you divide? That's right. And don't mess this up. What's 2x minus negative 3x? It's, oh, so this is just 5 to the 5x. Hey, I wonder why he gave you 125 while we're on the topic. Hmm. I bet it's 5 to something. Anybody know? It is 5 cubed. So if we call that side 5 cubed and we call this side 5 to the 5x, we can just drop the bases, can't we? Yeah. So 5x must be 3. So dividing by 5, that means the answer to this problem is 3 fifths. That's all there is to that. And we can do 15 if you want. Also, just make sure you study them, okay? okay. Don't just write them down and then never look at them again. You have, to, you have to do this on the test. So I have no problem modeling things to you, but... You actually have to learn how to do it. That's, I know it's crazy. What a world where you have to do stuff. Okay, so here's 15. Um, you were right. You can get all the bases to be the same because guess what these all are written as? Something to a power. Two, two exactly. So we're going to write them all with a base of two. All right. Four is two squared. Hmm. 32 is two to something. Anybody know what it is? It's two to the fifth, it is. If you're not sure, you can always look on your table or just guess on your calculator, correct? You just type in like two to something, see what it is. <sighs> okay, a bunch of powers to powers. So we better multiply, right? Yeah. So two to the two X plus one. That's gonna be two to the negative six X. This is gonna be two to the 20 minus five X. Everybody buying that? 20 minus five X. Now, while I'm at it, here, there is a sl slight trick to this problem. I want to write everything with a base of 2. Over on the right, we have just the number 1. Anybody know how to write 1 as 2 to a power? <gasps> yeah, that's, a, that's another little trick right there. If you ever have a 1, you can rise whatever the heck you want to the 0, can't you? Don't forget that little thing right there. Okay, now over on the left, we're not quite done because we've got all these bases. We're just going to add the exponents, right? So this is going to be 2 to the, let's see, grand total. 
I'm seeing negative 11x here, but 2x there. That's negative 9x, I believe. And numbers, I just see a 1 and a 20, so plus 21. And make sure you compare it to 2 to the 0. You don't want to say that negative 9x plus 21 is 1. It's not. That exponent of negative 9x plus 21 is equal to that exponent of 0. So now all we got is negative 9x plus 21 equals 0. And if you add the 9x over and then divide by the 9, looks like our answer is 21 ninths, which does reduce, because what goes into 21 and 9? Three. Yeah, let's divide both by the three just. So how about 7 thirds? That's a little cleaner in this one. So there's your answer for that one, 7 thirds. And that's about it. OK, so if you can get the bases to be the same, great. If you can't, you have to take a log, right? And even though logs is tomorrow, let's just do one more problem that actually might require a log just to get you going on that kind of stuff. Anything else on this page or the next page that looks particularly scary? Let's do 21. Let's do 21. It looks scary, but it's not bad. It does keep climbing. I guess we'll just do the same thing over and over again. OK, so we're going to do 21 real quick. No way I can get these bases to be the same. This base is 2.7 something. That's five. They're not going to play together. So we're going to have to just dump, jump in and do it. Well, hmm. It's scary. Natural log. Yeah, let's just start that. Natural log of this side. And that means I have to do natural log of this side, right? Now, what's that natural log going to do for me on the left? It is. It's going to get rid of this base, isn't it? They are going to cancel. So this is better. Now I just have this left, which is, it's another exponential, but it's not nearly as ugly. So I wonder what I'll do now. Another oh, another natural log. OK, so natural log of this side. Natural log of this side it means I have to take a natural log of a natural log, but who cares? That's how the rules work. And then again, hey, look at that. These bases cancel out. And lastly, we got x squared equals this thing. So all I got to do is undo a square with a don't forget your. Ah, uh, so the final answers are plus or minus, as weird as it is, the square root of the natural log of the natural log of five. No, they do not. They are not inverses, are they? That's like saying addition undoes addition, or negative undoes subtraction undoes subtraction. Because they don't. That's why how it works. All right. I will let you go. Yeah, go ahead. You're going to carefully type this in your calculator. And you don't need to do the plus or minus. You can't type in plus or minus, can you? But at least type in this much. Type in the square root of the natural log of the natural log of 5. Let's see what you get as a decimal. Got to vote for 0.4578. Anybody got confirmation? 0.4. Got something different? 0.68. Okay, double check. So then your answer would be plus or minus 0.698, whatever heck you said. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's kind of, nah, just three or four or something like that. You don't have to go forever. The nerd in me would write them all down, but that's just me because I don't like to round. Rounding pisses me off. Rounding is gross. And that's it. Tomorrow we'll review logs hardcore. But in the meantime, I would get started. I think you can get through a lot of these tonight. Now you got all the way till Thursday, but there are like 50 problems. So it is going to take some time. A lot of just practice problems. Maybe go through, do the ones you can. And tomorrow we'll finish up unit uh, eight. And then Wednesday will be entirely yours to work on review assignment, ask questions. But get started on now. Ask questions now. That's what we want to do. Yes. Yes, you may. Sure. Good work, guys.